Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I have did an unboxing video for this piece a few weeks earlier. Do check out the video on why I think this watch is worth the asking price for being a micro brand. In this video, we will be taking a closer look at some of the specifications of the watch. So let's jump in straight away. The watch has a case diameter of 40.4 or 40.5 millimeters when measured from the bezel. But on the website, it is stated to have a diameter of 39 millimeters because if we look at it, the bezel is slightly bigger than the watch case. It has a lug to lug distance of approximately 47.3 millimeters. The thickness is 13.1 millimeters and it has a 20 millimeters lug width. The case is entirely brushed at the top and at the side and it has two high polished chamfered edges running across the watch case. It has drill lugs which makes swapping out the bracelet fairly easy. It has a bi-directional 60-click full stainless steel bezel. The bezel action is extremely solid and is very satisfying to click in place. The dial is protected by a box sapphire crystal with some green anti-reflective coating on the underside. It has a water resistance of 200 meters which is a bonus for this pseudo GMT or aviation style watch. It has a screw down crown that is signed with the Nodus logo. From the far, the dial looks like a plain white dial, but there is actually some very mild texture going on on the dial. Let's, let me just zoom in a little bit here. Okay, I'm not sure whether or not the camera is picking up but there is a very fine textured, a very fine matte dial, matte white dial. And there is some sort of a different finishing near the chapter ring. All the hands and markers are polished and they have a gunmetal color. This creates a very good contrast against the white dial, making the watch very legible. The markers and the hands are filled with generous amount of loom. The loom, if I'm not mistaken, is Super, Super Luminova C3 that gives out a green glow. There is a date window with the metallic frame around. The Nodus logo, Contrail and the automatic words, they are all printed. Well, on this piece, there appears to be some little speck of dirt inside the dial. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to show this up in the video. If I can, then I'll just throw in a few pictures. If you can see, there is some kind of a hair-like material just at the top right corner of the date window on the dial. The movement inside this piece is a Miyota 9015. It is a high beat automatic movement that beats at 28,800 beats per hour. Out from the factory, it has a rated accuracy of minus 10 to plus 30 seconds per day, but Nodus regulated it in four positions to within plus minus 8 seconds per day. From the regulation card, the specs of this piece is slightly better than the rated specs that Nodus gives out on their website. The maximum deviation with the dial up is only plus 4 seconds per day. The movement is hackable and hand windable. It has a power reserve of 42 hours. The case back of this piece is a solid screw down case back with some nice interesting etching on it. It shows off three jets with their contrails, which is the name of this time piece. And from Noda's website, it is stated that they are using Viton case back gasket. From what I know, Viton is a marketing name of a synthetic rubber made from a company called the Camers Company. I think it is a chemical resistant synthetic rubber, which is another bonus for this piece. The bracelet is an H link bracelet. It is fully brushed at the top and has polished sides. It has solid end links with a free mid link that does not protrude out which helps in keeping the true lug to lug distance just between the actual lugs of the watch case. 
It has a fold over push button deployment clasp. And from my unboxing video, I mentioned that the clasp feels a little unrefined. The edges are sharp and can cut, scratch and also irritates my wrist. The finishing seems a little coarse, especially on the inner side. As you can see from here, especially this part, it seems unfinished in my opinion. And let's compare to say a lower price watch. For example, this Orient. If you look at the clasp, if you, you can clearly see the difference in the finishing and refinement even on a lower tier price watch. When closed, the clasp is not flush. Maybe this is what irritates my wrist. If you can see from here, this side here, it's a little higher. So let's say if you're putting it on your wrist and you are moving your wrist around, this sharp edge here could catch on your, on your skin and rub on it. The safety foldover part is also very hard to pry open. A Seiko flip locks feels better in operation when compared to this. Another thing is the extra long clasp with 6 micro adjustment position. I'm not sure if this makes sense though. In my opinion, micro adjustment holes are used for fine adjustment when removing a link is too tight and adding a link is too loose. It is used to get a good fit between the length of a single link. But when the number of micro adjustment exceeds the length of a single link, they just feel redundant. I wish they could have kept to either 3 or 4 holes to make the clasp a little shorter. So this is how the watch looks on my small 6 inch wrist. Due to the short lug to lug distance, it sits pretty nice on my wrist. However, the clasp is a little too long, but luckily it's still not overly wide. So I guess it's still acceptable, but I really wish that it could be a little bit shorter. Alright, time to wrap this video up. As I mentioned in my unboxing video, this is my very first micro brand watch. And for US dollars the price might be quite steep for this piece. But after having it for a while, I think it's still a reasonable price given what you are getting. Yes, there are some flaws, but I don't think there are any deal breakers here. I did mumble why I feel this piece is worth the asking price in my unboxing video. Do check the video out if you're interested. That's it for this video. If you're new to my channel, please help by subscribing to my channel. It does help me a lot. And please don't forget to follow me on my Instagram at gfw underscore watch for more watch pictures. Till then, I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.